Hello and welcome to the second video in my series regarding utilizing an Amazon Fire TV and your NAS to enjoy your multimedia. In my previous video I talked about Synology's DS Video and to a lesser extent DS Photo application and how it compared with Plex Media Server. And this time it's the turn of QNAP. We're utilizing Q Media. This is an application you can download for free on your Amazon Fire TV store. There's also support on other platforms as well. And enjoy your media. Now, before we go any further, I've got to go through just a few quick disclaimers. Flicking back to the PC screen here. Um, on the QNAP NAS, I am utilizing uh, Photo Station, Video Station, Music Station, and Q Maggie. Although it's worth highlighting that Photo Station soon will no longer be supported in Q Media. So do bear that in mind. Another thing I am long utilizing alongside all of these, uh, the multimedia console application. This allows you to index your multimedia appropriately uh, for all different multimedia types and apps. And all of that is collected and used in the QMedia apps. If you're gonna use it yourself, utilizing those applications and multimedia console first is hugely important because all that's gonna happen with QMedia is it's gonna access these databases. Uh, another thing I will highlight is although Plex Media Server is gonna be running on a different server, so we don't have any limitations of bandwidth or overwork in the system. I am utilizing a Synology NAS. It's not gonna make any difference to the overall result of this video. It's just, I wanted to highlight that occasionally you might see that the IP on one NAS is different to the other. That's because Plex is running on a different NAS, but we are judging Plex in of itself. And talking of IPs, we are accessing both of these NASs locally, although both of them allow access um, with both the Q Media application and utilizing Plex Media Server they give you the option to access the NAS remotely, whether it is you're going to use uh, your standard Plex account, Plex Pass or Spog Standard, or if you're going to use QNAP and their My QNAP Cloud. So let's go through it. Now, one of the earliest areas of contention I had in my previous video with DS Video, and hopefully it gets published in the right order, was with DS Video, you could only access video. And in, at least on the uh, platform uh, Fire TV, DS Photos does not access the Synology Photos app. It only works with DSM 6.2 and Photo Station. You have to use Apple TV or Android TV in order to access Synology Photos. Luckily, this is not the case on Q Media. Q Media gives you the option to access pretty much everything. You can tap into Video Station there where you've got all of your different directories to look at. You can choose to tap into, alternatively, Q Maggie and access your albums. Although do bear in mind that the Smart AI albums by default do not appear. You can't access your AI photos of facial recognition and more. You have to go through the cataloging tools built into Q Maggie and then create new albums. But I will say at least you can access the mainline directories. You can go on a file folder level, which is hugely appealing, I think, for a lot of users. Because whether it is you want to use the slick GUI and scraping of metadata to enjoy a slick Netflix level experience, you know, that's one option. But some users want breadcrumbs. They want the option like MX Player and VLC to just go through files and folders and find individual apps and go straight into them from the comfort of their sofa there. Now heading back in, we can go back to those main options there on the right, on the left hand side of the screen. We can also get into the music. So if we choose, we can go into the My Music folders, play back some of our music nice and easily, and I've already muted this, so hopefully we won't have any problems. N Nintendo, they're not the litigious type, are they? But from here, we can go into the albums, we can go through all of that there, we can find out information about it, we can shuffle, we can do all the usual stuff there, and it's already and accessible straight away off the bat. So again, lovely selection there of configuration options built into Q uh, Media there. Now, if we head back in here, we leave that one, and this time go back into Plex Media Server, we can access photos, music, and all of that stuff. We can do all of those same things. Now, how it's presented, when I was talking about, again, sorry to make a back reference once again, comparing Synology and QNAP, but I would say there are some users who will prefer the way it was laid out on the QNAP. Remember, if we just flick quickly back to the QNAP one there, there are some users who are probably going to quite like how nice and clear all of these options are. Now, I'm recording this right now on um, you know a standard uh, laptop here, a 16.5 inch laptop. But if you're sitting on a 50 to 60 inch TV, 
this text may be too big it may look too um big for you but there are just some users that are going to prefer that layout but there's still no denying that graphically and at least in terms of that slick interface if you're making comparisons to your netflix to your prime to your hulu to your hbo or whatever this is going to look nice so whether it is we go into individual files here if we look at the matrix here we've got a layout of all of that information and we can find out more back end information even the watch together function which is pretty darn good uh, the way the uh, the data is laid out it's still a little bit more graphical and just highly more comparable to a lot of third party streaming services that are out there and again we've got support of tv shows we've got support of music we've got support of photos but on top of that you've got things like live tv and accessing accessing some of those plex services although some of you might not want it or you might not have a plex pass and therefore you don't get a chance to use it but nevertheless i would say if i personally had to pick i prefer the plex GUI on Amazon Fire TV than I do uh, the QNAP Q Media one, but I know in terms of simplicity, you can't really argue with that layout. Let's look at the playback of certain multimedia files. So we go back in to Q Media there, and this time we're going to look at, at that movie file. So we're going to use the Matrix movie. So we're going to go into that classification area there, and we're going to select the Matrix. And we go into the Matrix, as you can see, we've got some of that metadata scraped there using the plugin, uh, the TV database plugin you can get in the App Center there. It gives us information about the movie, uh, any other movies that are on the system. It makes a recommendation, but you can't really tap into the individual actors you can't use a lot of this information to cross reference and see for example all the films that you have that have got leonardo dicaprio or anything like that and if we play back a file we've got the standard bog a uh, standard box here very similar to what we saw on the synology application presumably using the default player that's built into the amazon fire tv there and if we have a look at the options menu there we have got the option to get information we can rate it a little bit there change some of the classification find out more information about the file and that's really it not much in the way of configuration there we can head to the bottom and if we go towards the secondary we can flag and bookmark areas of the multimedia and we can change the audio files if we want for different language or different types as well as subtitles fairly quickly there on the fly. Uh, changing options and fast forwarding and stuff is very straightforward. Tapping left and right or skip forward, skip back. And that's really it. There isn't much of an option for transcoding or conversions. More on that later on. And that's kind of the layout of that. You can kind of flick through there at the top, look at the different options. If you go into a TV show, for example, if we select black books there, we should be able to see the individual episodes all laid out there. But that's really it. That's what you're getting. It's largely the same. And if we make our way into the settings menu there and have a little look how things are handled, we've got those login settings there. We've got the video settings where, again, we've got the option for changing some of that resolution. But that's really it. There's not much more you can do. You can change the default player, of course, if you want to go ahead and use other video players that may be on the uh, Fire Stick. You've got VLC, MX player. But again, if I was to use those, then I would be reviewing their video app. And I just want to review Q Media. So, for example, if we change to Native Player and come out there, and again, the Native Player is almost certainly exactly the same, if we go in and play back that same file again, let's go back and play the file. So we've got some sense of cohesion there as the remote catches up with some of my very quick uh, clicking. If we carry on from where we left off, it's removed one of the options, but that's really it. Yeah, that's all we're largely seeing there. And if we go back in and this time have a look at using a different player, we can go ahead, video player, select a new native player. And if we had, again, VLC or other native players on there, it would give us the option to select them. Nice to have the option, but it's still quite light on the old details there. Now with fo uh, photo settings there, we can change the quality of it there. That's really it. As mentioned earlier on, you can't access a lot of the AI albums that you saw earlier on. And again, playback with on-the-fly transcoding appears to be available on the music settings, but zero other configuration options beyond that. So overall, not a vast number of controls open to us there. And again, if we'd created those customized playback folders, so we go into multimedia, go into movies, uh, find um, uh, the matrix there, go onto the file that we're trying to play. We can play back that file and it will just play it normally there. We can go ahead if we choose, for example, to press the options button here built into 
um, Fire TV. There's not much more we can do than that. And that's it. We've kind of reached the limit of what our options are open to us there, at least in terms of the GUI and the playback, and little to no transcoding uh, ability built in there, which really is stark when compared to Plex Media Server. Now, if you've watched my other video, you know what I'm going to say, but the sheer scope of configuration and control that's built in with Plex Media Server is just phenomenal. Sorry, I accidentally tapped the home button there. I'm using uh, uh, Amazon Fire TV Remote. And if we make our way back to a lot of those options from earlier, we can see not only have we got when we go to viewing a video file, let's go to it there. In the video file there, we can choose, select it, open it up in those new options. Not only have we got slight com uh, playback configuration options built in there, which although in of themselves aren't exactly massive, if we start playing the multimedia file, there are further options that are uh, afforded to you to configure the file are actually pretty darn impressive. So you can choose to opt on the fly, convert that file to something better suited to the network environment. And it gets even deeper when we go into the configuration settings uh, uh, in a moment. And again, going to the end there, you've got fairly standard stuff to find out more about the movie, find out more about it. But again, nothing over and beyond. But it's when we come out of the multimedia folder and head back in, if we go back now, that we find by going to the bottom here and going into the settings menus, the sheer scope of configuration and control that this Plex client app affords to us. So going into the settings menu here will allow us to kind of configure a lot of minor details about our server. So for example, there's a lot of stuff that's built into Plex Media Server itself, and particularly those with a Plex Pass that can enhance the GUI for you there. But it's when you break down into the video quality for local home streaming that you can bolt on a restriction on certain picture qualities. And for those of you that are accessing lots of different media across a home, lots of different users at once, you might want to bind some devices to be locked in at a certain bit rate, particularly if you're only listening to low quality stuff anyway. Again, audiobooks, um, not music to a degree, but certainly stuff like that. And the same goes if you're going for remote access, you can choose to restrict some of those qualities as well. The system will automatically convert when needed, but it's still nice to have that option that you can affix some of that maximum streaming quality remotely if your uh, NAS is being accessed for multimedia by multiple users worldwide on internet connected services there. And this is a huge amount of configuration and control that is just absent in the Q Media app. A lot of these controls, I will add, are in the application for mobile. They are available for the application that you use in QTS and QUTS. So why they're absent here on the Fire TV application is your guess or mine. Overall, I'd say the strength of the QNAP Q Media application comes down to simplicity. Not only that simplicity of accessing all of the media via one single outlet that you can install on your Amazon Fire TV, which is responsive, I might add. These are all very responsive and you're using the free um, metadata scraping they're all going to run fine and transcoding will takes part will take place in the background where needed you just can't really control it as much the same goes the ability to go ahead and if you want to share files with people or just share certain folders you can do that from within the QNAP and then anyone remotely around the world who you give access via the share you can make sure that they can only access certain albums then locally on the Fire TV app, the fact that you can break down to a file folder breadcrumb level is definitely going to be appealing to a lot of users who want to go ahead and break down into files here on a far more granular level than general streaming apps and services provide for you there. And when it comes to accessing different multimedia types, that's desirable too. I just wish some of the intricacies and advantages of QMaggy were integrated into this so I could see some of those categorization options. If I go ahead and select a picture, for example, of my cat here at Christmas, it's a lovely picture and it's certainly been lowered in uh, resolution there. Where I've done it on, on purpose for the uh, quality of the image, but there's no means to find out more information about the picture. I'm tapping the remote, I'm tapping down, but that's really it. We can create a slideshow. We can find out a bit of information about it. Actually, I take that back. We do have access to quite a bit of the metadata there that you might not use. Not all of it, but certainly a decent amount of it. But it's 
It's that sort of thing I think they should be using that metadata to perhaps, I don't know, use the map option. The idea that I could see a map like you see in Photo Station from the comfort of my sofa would be appealing. The ability to access a lot of those AI photo recognition services would be appealing. The same goes for Music Station. I love that I can access all of my music here. And I like that it does sort it into albums automatically and will go through artists. It will go through different album titles and genres if that's locked into the metadata to start with. All of that stuff is really, really good. And again, file folder access, always good. I just wish there's, much like Synology, an application you could use on, say, um, Amazon Alexa. Now, you can use uh, the My Media Alexa skill to voice command your uh, Amazon Alexa to play back your media from your QNAP NAS. That's good, but there's no first-party app which is a real shame. So I'm not going to log out there quite yet. Now you compare all of this to QNAP and uh, uh, to Plex, and where Plex's strength lies, they've got the same single portal access point. But weirdly, despite it being a third-party application, I feel like I've got more control over the multimedia in my QNAP NAS than I do with QNAP's own app. Whether it was that I was using any of those settings options at the bottom that I mentioned earlier on, that level of control is good. We're going to skip over some of this stuff that's Plex Pass related, and I know a lot of you aren't that bothered by, but I like the fact that I've got more elements of control built into the Plex app than I do on QNAP, and it baffles me that QNAP can't give me this, given that it is native playback there. Yes, we're seeing a slight bit of lag, and a part of that is my capture card connected into the laptop. But say, for example, I play back this file. This is one of my genetic test files here that we utilize for all of our Plex media server testing regularly. I do find that I like the fact that here, if I choose to change that picture quality, to kind of do the share watching together with other users, that sort of thing. These are all really nice features that I'm just kind of gutted are not available to users on QNAP's own app. And ultimately, that's why if you really put a gun to my head and I had to pick between these two, which would be weird, I'm going to say and recommend to users that they opt for Plex over QMedia. QMedia is good, and certainly for simplicity, if you don't want to dick around, it's a great app. You just have to make sure that if you are going to utilize it, that you are most certainly utilizing multimedia console, utilizing photo station, video station, music station, and multimedia console as mentioned. Sorry, Q Maggie, I meant there, repeating myself, not photo station either. But as long as you use those apps and configure this properly for the first time, it's going to be good for you. And that's notwithstanding using just standard DLNA, something supported in both Plex and on the QNAP NAS, which means you can use your third-party VLC MX player. But when it comes to Fire TV, I think, for me, Plex still takes it. And I think it's very hard to disagree with that finding. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed part two of this series. Again, part three, we will be comparing Synology and QNAP, something we do on this channel quite a lot. But stay tuned uh, for later this autumn when I'm going to be looking at MB, of course, and Jellyfin, which are always going to be fun experiences to look at here on your from the comfort of your sofa. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for those. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.